Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins, upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes, we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people? A grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers, though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood. But the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach a laughing stock to my neighbors and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, Father into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. 
but my trust is in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. Into your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies and my persecutors. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my spirit. spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you hope in the Lord. Father, Father into, into your hands, hands I commend my spirit. spirit. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Glory, Glory and, and praise, praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Blessing, Father. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his gospel worthily and well. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and Pharisees and went there with the lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, whom are you looking for? They answered him. Jesus, the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, Whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup the, gave, the father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune and the Jewish guards, seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, 
went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around the charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm. And they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order not to be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your laws. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he had said indicting, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? <clears throat> Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, king of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and a purple cloak, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the gods saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid, and went back to the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? 
Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven into one piece from top down. So they said to one another, In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled, they said, that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vestures they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there, whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. It was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop, and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies may not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. For one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage saying, they will look upon him 
whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along the spices according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was closed by the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. difficult and painful day definitely for our Lord but for us as well and I have people who ask why did the father do this to the son no one from this parish has asked me that yet but they ask and it's a hard question to understand we need to realize that God is justice and love and kindness and forgiveness and infinite in all of these areas and so it was necessary that Jesus came and sacrificed himself for us the reason being that we sin and a sin is a sin against God and sin against one another but also a sin against God and God is infinite and so when we do even a little, a little white lie, if lies come in colors, a little white lie, you think, yeah, it's just a little thing, is an infinite sized sin against God. And we are not infinite beings. We are finite beings with beginnings and ends in this world. And we cannot pay for an infinite sized sin, not even the smallest one. And so we would be eternally damned. But Jesus, Son of the Father, and to be clear, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God himself, in his infinite love for us, wants to save us, wants to forgive us for our sins. But in his infinite justice, God cannot deny himself, nor would we want him to. His justice must be paid. And so, since we could not pay the price of our sins, the price of our crimes against ourselves, the world, and against God, could not pay that infinite price, God himself came to pay the price for us. It needed to be paid because God is just. And so Jesus, the Son of God, God himself, was born into the world as a full human being, absolutely, completely, and entirely fully human, while still being absolutely, completely, and entirely fully God. Two natures, human and divine, such so that the angels were astounded. And Jesus was born among us as a human being, lived with us, taught us about God, never sinned even slightly ever in his life no little little white lies or anything like that absolutely sinless but he was one of us jesus is fully human and one of us and as one of us and as an innocent and sinless one of us the innocent and sinless one of us he took all of our sins the people of his day, the people before him, and the people who came after, all humanity's sins upon himself and paid the price to God. He was tried in a legal way by the Romans. It was 
not a proper hearing and, and even Pilate said he's innocent, but he was tried and executed for the crimes. And God allowed him to suffer both physically and spiritually for all of our sins and to pay our debt because he is human he can pay our debt our debt and because he is God he can pay our debt on an infinite level and so fully pays for our debt before God and wipes our clean wipes clean of us our sin for those of us who accept the forgiveness that Jesus has won for us in himself and the fact that he has wiped away our sins if we wish them to be wiped away we need to agree it's not just automatic we need to agree with Jesus and come to God through Jesus and God wipes away our sins and through Jesus we are sinless and the gates of heaven will open for us and God's kingdom will be ours, a kingdom of joy and love and peace and family and friends and fullness in God for all eternity. This is the gift that God pays for us. This is the sacrifice that the Son of God makes for us today on Good Friday. To pay our sins. There was, there is no other way. Every one of us has earned eternal damnation. And Jesus has paid our price. Let us rejoice in our Lord God, in his love, in his justice, but in his forgiveness and in his mercy. And the fact that he loves us so much that he willingly chooses to give himself for us. Never doubt that God loves you always on the individual level and on the, the global level. He loves us all. And let us live in God's love and sharing that infinite love, that love that God passes down through us. Let us share that with everyone else. And now, we bring our prayers to God himself. For the Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guide her and unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the Pope, let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharm for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by their, you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For all orders and degrees of the faithful, 
Let us pray also for our Bishop John, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may wa open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians, let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Jewish people, let us also pray for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on their way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right and sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you, and by finding you come to rest, grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love, and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion may, through your gift, be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors 
banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travel is safety, to pilgrims return, health to sickness, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort our, a comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in the hour of need your mercy was at hand, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the sick, the dead, for those who feel lost or dismayed, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the swift end to the corona pandemic that inflicts the world, that our God and Father heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health, and healing, look with compassion on our world, brought low by disease, Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that assail us, and in your fatherly province grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those working to eradicate this scourge. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. This is the wood of the cross, on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for, for the, the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the power, and glory are yours, yours now and forever. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. those of you at home who are unable to receive Holy Communion but truly wish to, please join in our prayer of an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have all a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads for the blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have been honored the death of your Son in the hope of the resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and re everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.